everyone. It's good to see everybody. Are you awake yet this morning? I, uh, I'm going to tell you what, I don't know if I like that part of it right there, because look here. I, I, I didn't realize it went that far back down there. I, God only made a few perfect heads, amen? <laughs> it is good to see everybody this morning. Thank you so much for making the effort, taking the effort to, to get up this morning, get ready to come to church, and we appreciate it so very much. Isn't it fun to watch the kids all go back to learn more about Jesus, amen? Yes, that's always a good time and a fun time uh, for me to be able to watch the kids go back so they can learn more about Jesus Christ and who he is. We're in a series of messages. Uh, and what we are doing is we are walking with Jesus after his resurrection as he appeared to the disciples at different times. This morning I want to talk to us and I want to speak to us about Jesus Christ is resurrected for us. Peace given, peace received. Now, I missed the question mark on the end of that right there. So look at peace given... And then peace received with a question mark behind it. Because this morning I want to, for us to be able to concentrate what Jesus Christ has done for us and what he has given to us through his resurrection. And one of the things that he has done for us, one of the things that he has given us is peace. And I want us to, to know that and to understand. When I looked up the word in the Greek uh, of what peace meant, Peace means to be one or to rest. It is to be one or to rest. Or it is to be in the one and rest. If you want to take it and, and try to put it together. And this morning, I want us to know that we can find peace in Jesus Christ. And there is a way that he has brought about it. There's a way that he has done it to be able to help us to understand that we can have what is called real, true, honest peace in our life. John chapter 20, starting at verse 19, Jesus appears to his disciples. It says this, it says, On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. This morning, brothers and sisters, what I want to try to do for us is to try to help us to tie in the fact of what it means to have this peace in our life and in our heart. So many times as people, as Christians even, we will go through life and there's times when we, I think we really and, tru really and truly struggle with having peace in our life, having true peace in our heart. And I want to try my best this morning to help us to tie that to who the Holy Spirit is and what He does for us. Because this morning I want us to see and to understand that the Holy Spirit living in us is the one who brings true peace in our life. Peace was something that was said and started from the very beginning, when Christ was born. If you'll remember with me, uh, this, this won't be up there right away, but if you'll remember with me in Luke chapter 2, verse 14, the angels appeared to the shepherds, and remember what they said to the shepherds? Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, among those with whom he is pleased. There's a lot to that little statement right there. There's a lot to consider in that little statement. First of all, the angel appears and he gives glory to God as, as the angel should. You would expect the angel to do that. But the angel has, has brought to us and to help us to see, to give glory to God. And then the very next thing he says is, And on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. Now, there's a qualifier to that statement. There is something that happens in that statement right there, and we need to catch it and need to understand. 
The peace that he is speaking of is a peace that goes beyond any kind of understanding. But it is for those with whom he is well pleased. Now here's the question. This may be a challenging message, so here we go. Is God pleased with us this morning? Is he pleased with me this morning? Have I brought to him everything that I am supposed to bring to him? And am I giving everything to him that I am supposed to give to him? Am I, as this angel came and as this angel said, Glory to God in the highest, have I brought God my highest? Have we, have we come together and have we been able to give him our absolute very best? In serving this week and going through our life this past week, did I do everything every day with God in mind in serving Him? Kind of tough, isn't it? Kind of challenging. Uh, we, it's, it's tough on us sometimes because we, can't, we get in our ruts, right? We go through life, we do the things, and pretty much our routine every day is pretty much the same. Get up at the same time, do the same things at the same time. That's pretty much what we do. Did we give God our utmost this week? Did we allow him to speak it to us and speak into our lives? And then did we take what he spoke into our lives and share it with others and speak it into their lives? Peace on earth and peace given to those whom he's pleased with. The reason why I wanted to put a question mark behind peace received is because I wonder, have we received his peace? To me, it's pretty amazing what God can do and how he has set a lot of things up. If you notice how he's done some things, he's allowed us to be interactive with him. He's allowed us to make choices to be with him, to work with him, to work in him. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? And the whole reason why I wanted to make sure that we understood that we have this peace received is for us to examine ourselves and see if really and truly we have received that peace. Because God has given it. He has given his peace. He, he has made his peace available to us through Jesus Christ. But the thing that we got to do and the thing that we have to do is we have to take hold of that and to receive that peace in ourself. And it's important that we understand that we can do that, that that is something that is very much available to us. And I want us to see this, I want us to understand this because peace and the Holy Spirit are connected. The peace and the Holy Spirit living in us is connected. Jesus is talking with his disciples, and he's speaking with the disciples, and as he's talking with them, and as he's teaching them, he sits down with them one day. In John chapter 14, starting at verse 15, Jesus says this, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the word, world cannot receive, but it neither sees him nor knows him, you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Brothers and sisters, that's speaking of the Holy Spirit. That's allowing the Holy Spirit to come and to be a part of my life and to, be, to, to have a hold of my life. I want to make sure that we see and that we understand, brothers and sisters, as Christians living in this world, it is impossible for us to continue to live the Christian life, to walk the Christian way, to obey God's word without recognizing and understanding the Holy Spirit and who he is and what he does inside of us. He is real. He is true. He is part of the Trinity. He is just an equal part as much as God and as, as Jesus is. He, is, he lives and he's, he's designed to live inside of us to be able to help us to see and to understand. When we begin to recognize and see who the Holy Spirit really is, 
when we begin to understand what it is that he brings to us and allows us to be able to live in him with. It helps us to be able to grasp hold of the fact of who we are as children of God. And, and, and the things that we're supposed to be doing as children of God. And how we're supposed to live our lives as children of God. So it is so important for us to make that connection. Peace and the Holy Spirit are connected. Because if you drop down just a few more verses there, and staying in John chapter 14, dropping down to verse 25, you read these words from Jesus. He says, These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring uh, to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace, I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, I will come to you. If you love me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. Brothers and sisters, what Jesus is saying and what he's trying to convey and what he's trying to get us to understand is that even though he's going to go to be with the Father, even though he's going to be hung on a cross, even though they're going to watch him die, even though he is resurrected, even though he has spoken to them, he wants us to see, he wants us to grasp, he wants us to know that through the Holy Spirit in this world, we can have peace through Christ. Anybody going through a tough time right now? Anybody having a hard time? You get a group of people with this size, there's a lot of things happening. There's a lot of things going on. One of the things that we try to, 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 to understand, one of the things I hope that we can try to understand is that when Jesus said he was going to give us peace, he didn't say it was going to be without tribulation. He didn't say it was going to be without having to endure some hard things and some hard times. What he did say and what he is telling us is that we're going to be able to have peace in that. Now let me ask a question. There is such a thing as us going through and experiencing turmoil in our life for one reason or another. And it causing us to have a time of unrest. But that is for a period of time. As human people, we will experience that. A sudden death. A loss of a job. Any number of different things can happen that can come to us and can give us uh, just a, 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 a time of, of, of unrest. But there is a difference between having a period or a time of unrest and living in unrest. Remember Hee Haw? You remember the old boys laying out, the old hillbillies laying out in front of the old shack there? They got their their jug of double X, passing it around, right? What are they saying? Doom, despair, and agony on me, right? Come on, you know, deep, dark depression, excessive misery. <laughs> if it weren't for bad luck, I'd... Doom, despair, and agony on me. Y'all didn't know y'all was going to get to hear hee-haw this morning, did you? <laughs> you, ever, you ever been around somebody who's just doomed, despair, and agony? Might I suggest to you this morning, Christians aren't supposed to live that way? It's not meant for the Christian to live that way. It's not meant for the Christian to stay in a place 
where it is a constant place of unrest. Because what we have that is something that is real and something that is true, it is the Holy Spirit that lives in us that brings us peace. Even in a time of tragedy, even in a moment of unrest, it is the Holy Spirit who comes and brings to us and allows to, uh, to, to, to breathe inside of us what it is that we know we have Christ. We know that we have God. We know that we have the Holy Spirit who can guide us and give us direction and to help us in a time of need. It's peace. To, to be peaceful. You, you know, a lot of times people will say, well, if you're going to be a person of peace, it means you don't ever get upset about anything. That's not real. That's not true. You can be a peaceable person and still be angry about something. Can't we? We can, we can still have the peace of God inside of us and we can still disagree with some things that are taking place and some things that are happening we don't agree with murder, do we? It should make us angry. We don't agree with, with, with someone stealing something from us, do we? It, it makes us angry. But you still have a peace of Christ living in you. You have the peace of the Holy Spirit living inside of you. It doesn't mean that we don't experience those times when we can get upset. It's not the kind of peace that doesn't mean we're not supposed to get upset. There are some things that as Christians we should be upset about. But at the same time, we should still have the peace of Christ, the peace of the Holy Spirit guiding us and directing us through that time. You ever been... What happens usually when, when, when people argue? When somebody gets in an argument, what usually happens? We get angry, don't we? Right? And then usually in our anger, what happens? We yell. We escalate, don't we? Because my point's more important than your point, and I'm right and you're wrong. Right? And that's why, that's why we get there. That's why we go there. But brothers and sisters, have you ever seen anybody be angry and still talk to you in a calm voice? What does it do to you? Just aggravates you good, doesn't it? You expect them to retaliate with the same that you're giving to them, right? But the one who comes back and speaks with a calm voice, who can still make their point, that's why it's important to be able to debate some of the issues without getting angry. To the point to where it makes us, that we, we're, we're yelling and screaming and our thought process is just whatever I can think to say. See, the peace that I'm speaking of, the peace that comes into our life, the peace that Christ is giving to us, allows us to be who we are supposed to be in Him. To take the things in our life, to take the things in our heart, to be able to express Him. To be able to, to take on the things that happen in life and still know that I have peace in my heart. That there's still something inside of me that, that has hold of me that will not allow me to turn loose and to just let go. But that I am that I, I, I that, that I have this 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 calming, this soothing inside of me that helps me to know. Christ is still in me. And He still has control of my life. You see, Jesus knew that all of this works together to be able to work inside of us, to help us to be the kind of people, to be the witness for, witnesses for Him that he is calling each and every one of us to be. 
peace and Christian living are connected. Peace and Christian living are connected. Philippians chapter 4, starting at verse 4, says this to us. We've heard this many times, many of us. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. And do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Will guard you. Not, Not the power of positive thinking. Although this most certainly is positive. It is that if what we will do is we will bring, and we will bring all of this anxiousness, all of these things that we might have in us, all of the surroundings that are going on around us, all of the experiences that we have experienced in our life, maybe this past week, maybe even yesterday or even this morning, to bring those things. And when we pray about those things, And when we get into supplication and give thanks to God, knowing that He's going to take care of these things, says He will bring peace to us and allow us to experience a peace that goes far beyond anything any of us can describe. Peace. A true peace, a real peace. The peace of God. The peace of Jesus. What do you think Jesus was experiencing while he was on the cross? Pain? Agony? Suffering? What did he say when he was on the cross? Father? Go ahead. Father. Father. For they don't know what they're doing. As hard as it may be for us to try to fathom, as tough as it may be for us to try to put ourselves in that place, we need to try to do the best we can to understand that even in that moment of time, in that moment of agony, that moment of suffering, Christ had peace. Because He knew what He was doing was for your good and my good. What He was accomplishing was for you and for me. What he was accomplishing was for the world. Peace. True peace. Paul goes on and he writes this. And these are the things that we're to put into practice. These are the things that help us. This is where we get to be interactive with God. He writes here and he says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellent, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. He will be with you. With you. So what about it this morning? What about me and my life? What about 
me in, in my heart and in, in, in my mind. Is there anything inside of me that is not allowing me to enjoy the peace of God? Now don't confuse and don't take away from here that I'm trying to tell you that this is just going to make everything hunky-dory. I am trying to convey to us and try to help us to understand that even though what we may be experiencing right now, we can still know we have and enjoy the peace of God in our heart and in our life. See, that's what Jesus wants us to know above anything and everything else. In his teaching is what he was trying to help us to understand. If you will know anything about what the disciples did and what they experienced after they came and arrested Christ, what happened to them? They scattered to the wind, didn't they? Scared, confused, didn't know what was going on. After all, wasn't he supposed to be the king of the Jews? After all, wasn't he going to overthrow the Roman government? After all, wasn't he going to reestablish the kingdom of Israel? After all, wasn't he going to sit on the throne of David? When Jesus reappears after his resurrection, is it any wonder that he would speak to them and say these words? Peace be with you. Did it change their circumstances? Was Rome still in power? You think the Pharisees, if they'd have found out they were part of the twelve, what do you think they would have done? Arrested them? I mean, what did Jesus speak to them? What did he say? peace I'm sure they had to recall when he said I'm not speaking and talking about the kind of peace that the world gives you and that you find in the world I'm talking about a peace that I have I'm talking about the peace that I had when I was hanging on the cross I'm talking about the peace that I have standing here before you So is there anything in our life and anything in our heart? Something that may be disturbing. Something that may be so hard, is hard for us to go through. Brothers and sisters, I want us to know and to understand that when we call out to Jesus, when we ask him to help us, his comforter is there. His comforter lives in us. The reason why I put a question mark behind peace received is am I receiving that peace? Am I laying hold of it and taking it? And am I grasping a hold on it and hanging on? Even in a time of turmoil, even in a tough, rough period of my life. What did Jesus promise when he was ascending into heaven? What did he say? Going to all the world? Doing what? Making disciples, baptizing them, teaching them all that I've taught you, right? Then what did he say? And I will be with you even until the end of the age. I will be with you. Singular, yet talking to the mass. Something that, the, that a singular person can take and use in their life and something that the church family can take and have in their heart, in their life, in this church. 
real, true peace. The peace that Jesus gives. Now here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Again, if you would, please, bow your heads. Please close your eyes if you would. Nobody, nobody looking around or anything like that, but I just wonder if someone this morning would say, Pastor, I'm going through some stuff that is just so hard, so tough right now. And, and I know Jesus is here, but I, I need this peace in my life. Is there someone? Just slip a hand up if you would, please. I see those hands. Yes. Yes, I see those hands. Yes. Anyone else? Yes, I see those hands. Yes. Yes. Now, if you would, please look up here at me. Thank you for those that raised your hands. And for those who raised your hands, here's, here's what I want to do. I want to ask you, and I'm going to ask the congregation to pray this along with us as we pray this. But let's pray for that peace to be inside of us. Let's pray for the Holy Spirit's guidance and direction in our life. So if you would, just repeat these words after me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, I acknowledge that I am at unrest. I do not have this peace in my life. But Lord, I am asking that you give me your peace. A peace that surpasses my understanding. And Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit would live in me and allow me to experience you fully and to know this peace in my life, in my heart, and in my mind. Amen. Thank you. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know and to understand we've got peace in Christ. The, old, the song says, Peace Like a River. Chris, I won't try to sing again, okay? I won't. <laughs> peace Like a River. I've got peace like a river in my heart. Amen. Flowing inside of me. Isn't it amazing? What God wants to do for us, peace, flowing. When water moves, it's got to go somewhere, doesn't it? Well, it's meant to flow. Peace, flowing like a river into me. Please, peace, flowing like a river out of me. Amen? Amen. Stand with me if you would, please. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, this morning we pray and we ask that you would be with us. And Lord, we pray and we ask that we'd, we would be able to understand and to know this peace in our life and in our heart. May we have it that we might be able to share it. Lord, we ask for an abundance of it. We ask that you would help us to experience it, to know it. And then Lord, help us to share it with others as we come in contact with other people. We ask now, Lord, that as we go throughout our activities this afternoon to watch over us, to guide us and protect us, and to help us, Lord, and bring us back together this evening that we can once again experience what it means to worship with our church family. We pray this in Jesus Christ's name.